can you live with a Tesla Model 3 if you don't have a parking garage with access to a level 2 charger? Well, as somebody who has gone through that for an entire year, I'm going to tell you guys my experiences. And here's the answer. You absolutely can. And you also absolutely might not be able to. <laughs> I'm going to get into detail about what the hell that means right now. I got this question asked all the time, and no matter what answer I tell anybody, they're always going to say something could be the polar opposite of it, and that is totally true. My opinions are just that. My opinions. These are my experiences, and even if your situation is very similar to mine, your outcome could be very different than mine. Our mindsets, the way we think, our fundamental theories of life could be completely different. So what I think is susceptible may not be to you. So with that disclaimed, let's jump into this. So my situation is... I purchased a Tesla Model 3 in March of 2019. We documented it. There's a plenty of Tesla videos that we've made while, uh, doing this. It's very popular with you guys, too. You guys really are interested in the Tesla Model 3. Uh, and the thing is, we lived in a condominium. So my wife and I live in a condo complex. We own the condo. We've paid it off. And it has a shared parking complex, shared parking garage. And the HOA, the HOA there does not allow any EV owners to install a charger there, any sort of charger, or even a charge point. It was even a gathering of Tesla owners to sign a petition for them to put a uh, couple charge points on the, on the roof. HOA denied it. So absolutely no home charging for any of us Tesla owners or EV owners in my particular complex. Of course, this is not necessarily the situation for everybody out there. There are a lot of HOAs in a lot of complexes like mine, condominiums with shared parking garages that let you pay for your own charge point, charging station, whatever. You got to pay for it, uh, and you also have to maybe pay a fee to them or some sort of thing. You work out with your HOA. Okay, now, see, with that other way, you already see how there's differentiations between condominium owners like me. The next thing we have to look at is... Your work situation. Work situation-wise, I live in Orange County, California. Surprisingly, in my city, it is very, very EV-friendly. EV a lot of the parking structures, a lot of the workplaces all have charge points installed. The one in my particular office does not. So where we're filming right now in my office, I work upstairs. I also work down here. Two offices here, there's no charge points out here. We talked to the landlord. They don't want to do that. Uh, there's a lot of... EVs here. One of my coworkers has it. We see a bunch of Teslas in this parking area too, but no, no, no charge points here. So that is out of the question. But fortunately for my wife, she worked at a public institution at a college, and then she started working for a Fortune 500 company uh, just last year. And they have like 60, 70, 130 chargers in parking lots throughout both ports of the employment. So, and they were also free for employees. Yeah. They're free for employees. I know state of California is kind of whack, uh, but that's the case. And um, they weren't the only ones. You know, my wife in her situation is not unique because there's a lot of other EV owners we've talked to here in Southern California that their place of employment has dozens of chargers for their employees that are free. You tap your charge point card in there and they automatically just don't charge you anything and you can charge because it has a certain code that you have to register with your employer and they activate these not available to public only for employees. So there we go. That was our solution right off the bat. So if you don't have access to home charging, you have to kind of figure out how you're going to work this around. Our solution was that my wife could get free charging at work. So what that means is that she would need to charge the car at work now that meant i couldn't drive the car well not necessarily so because i have a about 40 mile commute we've documented this also in other tesla videos but 40 miles per day round trip average commute for the american uh, driver around that much um not too bad so what we did was we decided that my wife would take the car on mondays to charge it and then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I would drive the car to work for my commute without a charge. And then on Friday, my wife would take it to work and charge it 
And for a charge point level two charger, a full workday usually charges the car up fully. I know sometimes you have to compete with your coworkers, especially in a very big workplace, even with like 60 something chargers, sometimes they all get packed. We have this routine. It's worked well. On weekends, we supercharge it. Thank you guys so much for all the supercharging credits. So many of you guys have purchased Teslas using our referral code, which we always have in the description when we do Tesla videos. Yeah, you really don't need to do that, but uh, we do appreciate you guys doing that. It really helps. But regardless, weekends, we supercharge the car. Mondays, my wife takes it back to charge fully. Boom, easy peasy. That's how we've been doing it. We haven't really struggled. If we really do need to charge because we need to drive further other than our commutes during the weekdays, we can always supercharge. There's so many superchargers in our area and they keep opening a new one. They actually opened a new one right across the street from my condominium. After that new one opened up, it just completely opened up flexibility for me as well. So in my situation, I have not had to worry about charging at all. Range anxiety, maybe a little bit since I live in Orange County, California. For those of you guys who don't know the geography in Southern California, Orange County, Los Angeles, there is a pretty big difference. Angels versus Dodgers, same kind of thing, right? It's They call it the freeway series. That's exactly it. I, I We do travel to LA a lot for um, social gatherings or for business needs. And, uh, you know, it is a little difficult. It is pretty far. Uh, plenty of superchargers outside of LA, not necessarily inside downtown LA. So uh, that commute, I do have to kind of sort that out. Superchargers really help. I cannot stress how beneficial it is as an EV owner to be on team Tesla because of the superchargers. I never have to worry. The quick charging on the supercharger is just nothing compared to what we have. I, honestly, I don't even know where the nearest Electrify America is or... I don't know what level three charging other than Tesla superchargers are in, in any area around there, but it's just the abundance and the flexibility of the superchargers. It makes it feel so much more reliable to me and it makes me feel safer knowing that it's almost like what I was accustomed to before buying a Tesla, which is gas stations. You just whenever you need it, you can just pull over. Yes, you have to wait a little longer with the charging time, but because the car has so many features like Netflix on it and, and car, car, karaoke that you just don't feel like it's wasted time. It is wasted time, but you just don't feel like it. it, it it's, it's an interesting dynamic here. So because of the superchargers and also the infrastructure around my neighborhood and my city here, I don't feel stressed at all about not having a home charger. Now, for those of you out there who are not able to have any charging at work and don't have any infrastructure like that, I can see how that's a little difficult. Charging in public might be a little frustrating if you aren't able to do that at your office when you just leave it there for eight hours. So I do understand why there is a lot of frustration and nerves for people thinking about buying an EV. That's the difference of the situation, honestly. I think you can still do it as long as you understand that there has to be a routine. And if your routine works for you and you can find a routine that fits your timeline, it sounds good. Even for those of you guys who need to supercharge because you don't have charging at work and you can't compete with people at Whole Foods to charge your car every single day, you can still do it with Supercharging. I know some people, um, and, you know, there are differing thoughts on this, but supercharging too much is not good. Uh, you don't want to really supercharge your battery too much. But, you know, if you can somehow manage to supercharge twice a week, some people do that. In, in fact, a Tesla employee, when I purchased a car, I um, was talking about the battery and how things work. Uh, that was his job to actually sit in the lobby and talk to people about Tesla batteries and how to manage it. He was in the same situation. He lives in a condominium complex, same as me. No, uh, The HOA does not allow them to install a charger. So what he does is he says he charges the car with a supercharger twice a week. And it fit within his commute. He drives enough, uh, enough miles in between his version of the car. This also depends on the version of your car. If you have a long range, you can probably drive a longer distance without charging the car, of, of course. If you have a standard range and you drive 80 miles a day, you might not be able to last you know, it's it's very interesting dynamic depending on what your car is, what your neighborhood is. But yes, absolutely, there are people out there who could survive without charging infrastructures at their house like I have for an entire year. So that's why in the beginning of the video, I said, yes, you can absolutely do it. And yes, you absolutely can't do it. 
it really depends on the person. So once again, I'm Alex from Tech. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are thinking about being a Tesla and if these videos help. I know in previous videos, some of you guys have said that. So if it does, I'm so glad to help you guys. I know it's a big decision to make whether you buy it or not. Maybe these videos will help you sway you one way or the other. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. And that's it. Be sure to subscribe here. Hit the bell button so you don't miss any of our videos. And check out our other videos right here. Until next time.